Hey guys, Justin here. Winning the Daytona 500 is hard in any split, but it's not as much as pure luck as you might want to think. So today I'm gonna to talk about some simple strategy that anybody can follow, and also some things that you can practice to be able to put yourself in the best position possible for the Daytona 500. I utilized pretty much all these strategies when I was the crew chief and strategist for Lake Peterson when he won the 2022 Podium 500. So hopefully you guys will see some success with these as well. First off, let's talk about prep and what you should be doing before the Daytona 500 even starts. I don't really advocate for practicing too much on the qualifying end of things, especially for a very long race like the Daytona 500, but if you wanna watch some tips on that, I'll link the video right here. What you should be practicing though are the things that will be very, very important for during the race. The first being learning how to bump draft and how to handle being bump drafted. You can do this by going into official practice sessions and trying to find people to hook up with, or if you have friends that also want to run the Daytona 500, you can run in the same session and just practice really getting on each other's bumpers and seeing what the car can handle. This doesn't mean that you're going to be bump drafting the entire race, but when you need to, you will be comfortable and confident enough to go for a sort of bump draft that will be very positive for the outcome of your run. I talk a lot about there being a sort of a political structure within every super speedway race, and people notice when you are a good bump drafter and a confident pusher, and they'll be more likely to want to work with you when it all comes down to it. If you disappear for the entire race, nobody really even recognizes your paint, and suddenly you find yourself in a position where you want to be in the front, you're just going to find yourself getting hung out to dry a lot more because people don't know if they can trust you, and they know the people that they've been racing around for the last couple hours a lot better. And all that takes is just a little bit of preparation to become a confident bump drafter and being able to hold a very steady line in every corner. The other huge thing that you should be practicing before the race is pit entry. This race is 500 miles. There are going to be green flag pit stops no matter what split you are in. If there are a bunch of wreckers in your split, they will be gone eventually and you are going to have to make green flag pit stops. And there is no worse feeling than coming up to your last lap on fuel for a green flag run and realizing you don't even have a breaking point for pit entry. Now you can go about practicing pit entry in a couple different ways. You could just do it on cold tires, on brand new tires, just to find a general mark and do it over and over again until you're very confident with how much brake you can put without locking up and what mark you have to hit before hitting the brake. But you can also do this in a more realistic manner by running about a full fuel run by yourself and testing, and then using the brand new active reset feature to set a point right before your pit stop, and then you can practice what it's like to do pit stops and green flag pit stops on old tires. Now I recommend doing this on old tires, but I also recognize that this is like a 30 minute time commitment to even begin to practice this. So if you're doing this the easy way by just doing it on one lap old tires or whatever, just make sure that you know going into the race that you're going to have to be a little more conservative than your marks that you learned from that sort of practice. Here's a quick clip from pro driver Derek Justice to give you an idea what the marks have to be on old tires but make sure to practice this for yourself as well because you do not want to be guessing in green flag pit stops. Now the last thing you need to do before the race starts happens after you load into the session, but before the green flag drops. And I'm talking about make friends. With how many people sign up for the Daytona 500, unless you're in a very high split where you know a lot of people, it's very unlikely that you're going to know really anybody in your split. So everybody's probably in the same boat as you. So just say in chat or type it out that you're looking for teammates or people to work with for this race and there is surely to be quite a few people interested until you can build a network of about five or six people to work with that can stay on your strategy, help you out by running a line, and so on. There's even time before the race to add everybody to the same radio frequency to be a sort of a team chat. The greatest advantage anybody can have in a super speedway race is having other people to work with. There's just nothing that a single person can do that can work around having six or so people all working together. So now let's move on to mid-race strategy. My first tip coincides with my video about missing the big one. I really believe that the best place to be in a super speedway race is at the front. Now, this could change a little bit depending on dynamics of the race. If you feel like the people are just pushing a little too hard, being a little too squirrely, I understand not wanting to be in the front. But the reality is that the majority of wrecks in super speedway races come from the middle of the pack. I am not a huge fan of hanging off the back of a big pack, especially in a big race like the Daytona 500. If you think everybody's going to wreck in the next couple laps, then sure, that's a good way to keep some distance and hope that you not get in the wreck and have something to say about it. 
but if it has a green flag feel to it, being at the back of the pack means that you are very, very easily dropped during a green flag pit stop cycle. Being towards the front of the pack when making green flag pit stops means that you have a lot more wiggle room to make slight mistakes, maybe overshoot your box by a tiny bit, and still be able to hang in the draft. If you make that mistake though from the back of the pack, you're gone. You're going to get lapped as long as the gray stays green. Keeping on the topic of green flag pit stops, I really like the idea of either pitting with a group of people that you know, or waiting until one lap after the majority of people in the pack pit. In top splits, it is very common for a team of around five or six people to all group together to short pit the field. By doing this, they can all come out at the same time and single file draft on the bottom lane, which is actually faster than a full pack drafting too wide. So if you can somehow group up five or six people in your split in the Daytona 500, consider everybody short pitting the field and trying to just run away with it. Many races have been won in this exact manner by hoping that the big pack gets too strung out off of a green flag pit stop and using the tightness of the bottom groove to do a five to six card draft and just pull away from the field. But if you are not able to organize that, why do I recommend you pit after the majority of cars pit? Well, usually the big pack will all pit together, more or less, except for a few cars. This few cars is enough to maintain enough draft for one lap to where that doesn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things. What does matter though is the entry. When you are entering the pits with 20 other cars, you just have to take it a lot slower than when you're entering the pit with only a few cars. And the big pack will string out too because of random things that happen during the pit entry. Maybe people have to slow down for others, someone overshoots a pit stall. They won't be that tight pack that they were when they entered. So by pitting one lap late and coming off of pit road, there's almost always somewhere to slot into even if you don't have the greatest pit stop. But the majority of the time, you will end up in front of that big pack even though they all pit together because you were able to get so much time on pit entry. That is, of course, you have done what I said in the previous section and practiced your pit entry. But how about for the pit stop itself? Well, for green flag pit stops, I recommend taking full fuel except for the final pit stop and then also alternating two side tires. So right sides on the first stop, left sides on the second stop, and so on. This is because taking four tires lengthens the length of the pit stop as opposed to just taking fuel only, but two tires does not lengthen the length of the pit stop. And for the final pit stop, depending on how many laps are left, I would take fuel only, and then you're gonna have to do a bit of math. So at Daytona, when you're running normally in the draft and not the lead car, you burn about half a gallon of fuel per lap. Now do the math for that with how many laps are left, but don't forget to add green white checkers because they happen a lot more often than you would think. For green white checkers, you would add half of that, so a quarter of a gallon per lap of caution, and then a full half gallon of fuel per lap of green. So you add that all together, I would say overshoot your number by about two or three gallons. And finally, one last warning on pit exit, if you have not changed four tires and you're coming back out onto the track, your car will be loose on the apron on pit exit. So just be aware that that's gonna happen and don't spin out, because honestly, someone probably will. And now at the end of the race is where things become a bit of a lottery. There are two outcomes to the race that can happen mainly. The first one is that you have a lot of green flag runs back to back, and the lead pack will probably be about 10 cars or less. And hopefully if you executed right on everything that we talk about, you'll find yourself being one of these cars. But the other thing that can happen is there can be bunches of cautions that breed cautions back to back, and suddenly it's just a madhouse. It's just like any other fixed race that you took about two and a half hours to get to. In the green flag situation, as boring as it sounds, I really like the idea of just chilling until a couple laps to go, and then just using your bump drafting skills that you practice finally to get up to the front and try to make a run at the win. But if you're doing the cautions breed cautions method of race, there's probably some other things that you have to account for. One is, do you have enough fuel for the green white checkers? I gave you the number, but maybe something happened and you might not have enough fuel. So how do you save under caution? The best way to save under caution is to be in fifth gear, full clutched in coasting, and then get back in on full throttle and then repeat over and over again and just keep up. How fuel saving works in iRacing is a little weird. It's all based on the revs. So being in the high gear, even if you're full throttle, means that it's better for saving fuel because the revs will always stay lower. 
And the other thing is avoiding wrecks. I like being on the bottom lane to give yourself more room to avoid a wreck, but sometimes that top lane is just faster and you need to risk it to try to make your way up to the front. Daytona is a lot harder of a track to avoid wrecks coming from behind it than at Talladega because of how much narrower Daytona is. So because of that, I do prioritize track position over anything. Now that's not to say that wrecks don't happen out of the lead, but it's all a game of probability and a game of numbers. And I think statistically, the place that you want to be is controlling the race somewhere around the front. And at the same time, it's like what I talked about earlier with politics. If you're running around the front, people know you as a guy that's running around the front and they'll be more likely to work with you. So hopefully with all these tips, you will be able to put yourself in the position to win the Daytona 500. Am I guaranteeing anything? Of course not, there's luck involved. Of course there's luck involved, it's Daytona. But using these tips can stack the deck the best in your favor. But other than that, I hope you all have a wonderful day and I hope to see you all on the track.